Okay, let's take a look at the components of the main magnetic field intensity, this vector that points uh, towards uh, the, the geomagnetic north. And I like to refer to these as components rather than elements. Sometimes they'll be referred to as elements, uh, but not to be confused with elements in the periodic table like uh, cobalt, iron, and nickel, and so on. So. Uh, just just to remind you of these different components, uh, we have the main field. It's pointing off towards ge geomagnetic uh, north, and its projection onto the surface uh, we can call h, uh, vector h, and the vector h can be projected into north-south components and east-west components, x and y respectively. Uh, this angle d, the declination, I'll often write it as a, a little d. And then the main field intensity can be projected also onto the vertical. Uh, and this angle, the inclination, is the angle that this main, that the main field strength, the main field intensity makes with the uh, surface or uh, the vector H, uh, a line drawn tangent to the surface pointing towards magnetic north. So those would be the, the different components that we have to work with. And if you're given any three of those per, for example, if you're given the three orthogonal components, x, y, and z, you can calculate the total field intensity, it's just the square root of the sum of the squares. Uh, once you're given that, you can take the inverse um, uh, trigonometric relationships in order to come up with the uh, uh, inclination. and. Likewise, if you're given the total field strength in a couple angles, the, the uh, declination and inclination, you can calculate the remaining components, likewise horizontal and vertical components in an angle. So given three components, you should be able to compute the remaining. And just as a reminder, because sometimes uh, it, it can be confusing, the Y component is your east and west. And so we're kind of looking at the diagram from off to the left here with the uh, X uh, going off to the uh, uh, in the north-south direction. So here we have um, the main magnetic field intensity broken down into horizontal and vertical components. We're looking at, uh, if you will, a vertical slice through the uh, Earth in a plane which contains the horizontal field intensity and the total field intensity uh, so that the horizontal field intensity is just a projection of the total field onto the horizontal so it would be f sub e times the cosine of i and the vertical um, field intensity would just be the uh, projection f sine of i, the projection of the total field onto the vertical. So again, this is a vertical slice. Over here we're looking at a horizontal or a map view. So we're looking down on the surface of the Earth and we're seeing a projection of the total field intensity onto the surface. And we know that this h sub e makes an angle referred to as the declination d with respect to geographic north. H sub e points to magnetic north, and this would be geographic north. And this would be the angle, that the declination. So x sub e is equal to h sub e times the cosine, just the projection of h sub e onto the north-south, basically the north-south component. And the east-west component, or y sub e, would be equal to h sub e times the sine of the declination. So we have other relationships that we could diagram here, but you know, this is uh, fairly straightforward trigonometry. So, again, you know, thinking back to this slide over here, given mostly any three components, you should be able to come up with the remaining vector uh, components. So I bring up this slide here. This is this is a good site to visit, uh, depending on you know, what you're interested in doing with magnetic fields, you can come to this site here, plug in your latitude and longitude, um, you know, even specify an elevation, and uh, specify a range of time. And uh, you can output a file uh, with um, 
all the magnetic components uh, by year. So it could be in an HTML format just displayed on the screen here, XML or CSV as I have over here. And um, you can put in your zip code. If you don't know exactly where you are, you can put your zip code in, get in the, uh, or you can go to country and choose a city and so on. But the uh, CSV output gives you year, declination, inclination, horizontal component, total, X, Y, and Z components. And uh, <coughs> we'll be showing plots of these in a minute. Uh, th th these are just, uh, this is a, a map of the total field intensity. It comes from the NOAA site. And uh, this is one that we've shown before, so I won't talk too much about it. Just reference you to this 50,000 nanotesla contour line. And again, we're just kind of contouring the uh, main magnetic field intensity over the surface of the Earth. And if we take that close-up view that we did uh, Last time, the 50,000 nanotesla line uh, comes close to hugging the eastern coastline of um, the U.S. and uh, Canada. We drop off, we are incre increased to 55,000 nanoteslas, 56, 57, 58, 59, and so on. So this is just the total field intensity. And um, as we mentioned before, the, there is a westward drift of the Earth's liquid outer core, it is, its, its rotation is retarded relative to that of the mantle and the crust so that we see the field components drifting to the west. And you can see that uh, if we look over the past hundred years, that the total field intensity has dropped from about 59,500 nanoteslas to just a little bit less than 52,000 nanoteslas here in 19, uh, 2017 here, uh, 40 degrees north, 80 west. Looking at the inclination uh, coming from the equatorial region, 20, 40, 60, 80, we would be, we would have a dip angle of 90 degrees at the dip pole. The location of the geomagnetic pole, again, this is a NOAA, you can get this on the NOAA site. Uh, just a close-up view of the uh, inclination uh, dropping or increasing as we go towards the North Pole. And again, just as with the other, uh, just, just as with the total fuel intensity, we see the inclination uh, changing through time. So starting off at about 71 and a half back in 1917, increasing towards 72 and then dropping off uh, almost steadily uh, to about um, uh, 66.7 here in 2017. Again, at, lat at uh, 40 degrees north latitude, 80 west longitude. This is the declination. And um, so we have negative declinations uh, over towards the east. We have positive declinations, the compass needle uh, pointing, suggesting true north is off to the east, uh, negative suggesting it's off to the west. So the westward declinations, the compass orientations suggest that geographic north is west of true north. And over here for eastward declinations, it, the compass orientation suggest that geographic north is actually, uh, uh, should be east in there, east of true north. I should change that. Make sure you change that. And um, again, as with the total field intensity and the declination, uh, this is all, the declination is also changing through time. So we're a little over four degrees, negative four degrees here, and then dropping to a little bit uh, over nine degrees here in uh, 2017. Again, at this particular location, you could go back to the NOAA site and do this for your location just to see how things have been changing and um, <clears throat> to get a projection of how they might change in the future. So, so again, you know, declination is negative to the west, so meaning west declination. So compass needle is actually pointing west of geographic north. 
when we do that, if we want to set our um, compass when we're in the field, we need to rotate the compass clockwise 10 degrees, 5 degrees, whatever, so that we get an accurate um, um, uh, representation showing that we're actually, our compass is actually pointing to the west of true north, so we need to rotate the uh, north on our compass uh, uh, clockwise. Likewise, for the east uh, declinations, we need to rotate counterclockwise. And again, this is just a plot of the changes in declination, so declination is changing through time. So if you do a survey one year and then you come out next year, well, you know, it might be the same. You might have to readjust your compass. So from year to year to, to take into consideration the fact that the declination, total fuel intensity, inclination have changed during that uh, interval between uh, surveys. So adjusting your compass with an east declination, rotate your uh, north to the west, so we're getting this counterclockwise uh, rotation here, and uh, we're actually correctly reading 12 degrees to the east rather than uh, due north. So uh, uh, that's those are the things that you need to take into consideration when you go out into the field. And the next time we're going to talk about some basic uh, relationships. Uh, just, you know, what is the magnetic force, uh, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the proton precession magnetometer, and uh, we'll, we'll also note that the magnetic permeability in the CGS system of units, which is the system of units that we're going to use, is going to be equal to 1, makes things easy if this is a 1, uh, in the vacuum and nearly so in the Earth's atmosphere. So we'll, uh, meet with you next time about that, and thanks for joining us.